thanks for joining me today. Uh, what we're doing in this video clip is we're going to introduce a concept. It's assumed at this point, or I am assuming with this, um, di with this video, that you know how to go from mass to moles and back and forth using your molar mass. So mass to moles use molar mass. That's our prior knowledge that we're bringing into this concept. Now, what we want to look at is called reaction stoichiometry. We want to look at what that 2 to 2 to 3 ratio means and how we can use it to solve all sorts of industrial questions. Now, to start with, I want to make sure that we know we can apply the law of conservation of mass. So, if I take this sodium azide, 500 grams of it, and I decompose it, 323.2 grams of nitrogen, the law of conservation of mass tells me that my mass of reactant has to be equal to the sum of my masses of products. And so by subtraction, we could find that our sodium was 176.80 grams. Okay, so can't create or destroy matter in this process. But you notice as I look at mass that these ratios 2 to 2 to 3 do not represent a mass ratio. When we are reacting, we're reacting as atoms and molecules, which are things we count. And therefore, on a larger scale than atoms and molecules, we're going to be looking at a mole ratio. So these balancing coefficients are the ratio of the moles involved in the reaction. And what that does is it gives us effectively new conversion factors. And so I can go from one substance to another and it doesn't matter which ones I'm going to or from. Uh, the question will specify what it wants. I have conversion factors. That balanced equation tells me I have a chemical equivalency or a stoichiometric equivalency of two moles of sodium azide for every two moles of sodium. Two moles of sodium azide for every three moles of nitrogen. Two moles of sodium for every three moles of nitrogen. So these are stoichiometric equivalencies and I'll be able to flip-flop them as I want in order to get things to cancel. So let's see this in action. So the question is talking about sodium chloride and so I'm going to form sodium chloride and we want to know how much can be formed now, when we do a stoichiometric calculation, we're dealing with theory. We're assuming that there were no other side reactions. We're assuming a reaction goes effectively 100% to completion. We are assuming that we didn't lose any along the way. And as we do more and more labs, you'll find that that's not reasonable. And so that theoretical yield represents the maximum yield, the maximum we could produce in this chemical reaction. So we have two sodiums, it's a solid. We have chlorine gas. I'm also assuming a prior knowledge of being able to balance chemical equations. And we would get two sodium chlorides. Okay. Now, I like to map this out. I call it the mole road um, because it helps give you direction of how many steps. So I have 300 grams of chlorine. So underneath the chlorine, I'm going to put 300, or excuse me, 30.00 grams. And it asks us, what is our theoretical mass of sodium chloride that could be formed? Now, we're not going to go mass to mass. We don't have a mass to mass ratio in this case. Instead, 
we're going to go via the mole road because we know that these relate one to another on a mole ratio level. So if I know mass, I can get moles of chlorine. Mass to moles use molar mass. And moles to moles. Now, this is the new step. And then moles to mass. So we're going to be doing a mole ratio. And a way to help make sure you get this set up right is the ratio is where you're going to, in this case we're going to sodium chloride, over from, and that's chlorine. And I don't know why I call this a magic mole ratio, but I've done it for so long that I just, I do. It's magic. It gets us from one thing to another. So we're going to have three steps in this problem. Now, I don't know what your teacher does, but I actually give my students uh, a point of credit for setting up that mole road as long as it's thoroughly labeled. I think it's that important. It's like listing your givens and checking your units. It's that important of a framework. So I have 30.00 grams of chlorine. Mass to moles use molar mass, so I want to get rid of grams of chlorine and go to moles of chlorine. One mole. Now, I want one mole. This is not coming from the stoichiometric coefficient. This is the molar mass. The molar mass is the grams per one mole. You will only use these balancing coefficients in one step, and that's going to be the mole ratio step. This is 70.90 grams. Now, I, that eliminates grams. I'm here on my mat. Now I want to get rid of moles of chlorine, and I want to go to moles of sodium chloride. Now, even if this is one-to-one, -one, I require my students to show that. That two is, goes here. That one goes here. It's two over from. This is the only place you will be using those balancing coefficients. Okay. Now I'm here on my map. I need to get from moles to mass. So I want moles of sodium chloride, and I want grams of sodium chloride, and we want the mass for one mole of sodium chloride. Don't use those balancing coefficients there. 58.44 grams. Okay. Now, if I do that math, to, I've got four sig figs here, so I'm going to have four sig figs in my answer. I have 49.46 grams of NaCl, assuming I can punch numbers into my calculator correctly. Okay, I want to do one more quickly. I know this will make this video a little bit long, but I, I think it will help for you to see this one more time. Um, so I'll move through this one a little bit more quickly because we don't have as much explanation. So I'm going to have potassium chlorate decomposing to potassium chloride plus oxygen. And that's a 2 and a 2 and a 3 for my mole ratios. Now it tells me I have 400 kilograms of the potassium. Oh, sorry. That's potassium chloride. I almost misread that, so be really, really careful. Anybody can do that, so be careful. It says I need to make this many kilograms of potassium chloride, and if I need to make that many kilograms, how many grams of potassium chloride must I decompose? And this assumes 100% yield. A stoichiometric cal calculation assumes perfection. Everything's pure and there's no loss of product and it goes 100%. So it assumes everything's perfect. So before I can get to the mole road, I have to get to grams. My goal is to get to that mole road. Then I can relate moles to moles and then go moles to mass. 
So if you are one of my students and you map it out thoroughly with numbers and units, not just whipping some arrows down, you can get some partial credit for that. All right, so you want to make sure you do that. This time we have a, a little bit more to do in terms of steps. We have four steps instead of three. I really encourage you, don't be a decimal shifter. If you're a decimal shifter, uh, you may lose points because you're not showing all work, and you may shift it the wrong way. A lot of people do that. I've seen it so many times, that's why I caution you against being a decimal shifter because I know it's risky. Okay, so that gets rid of my kilograms. I now have grams. Now, mass to moles, use molar mass. I've got grams in the numerator. I want them to cancel, so I put them into the denominator. KCL is 74.55 grams, one mole of KCL. So it does help to label. I was being sloppy there. I should have been labeling. And um, we're talking about KCL. So now we're here in our calculation. Now, we want to go from one substance to another, and they relate on a mole-to-mole -mole level. So I want to cancel moles of KCL. Do you see why it's important to label? Because now I'm going to shift to talking about KClO3. There's a 2 in front of the KCL, so I put a 2 there. A 2 in front of potassium chlorate, so I put a 2 there. If you put a one-to-one, -one, that would not be a problem for me personally, but you should check with your teacher. If it's missing, you may well lose a point, okay? So even if your answer is correct, we're about process, and process means remembering every step needed. So don't think you can just skip that step since it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You need to show your work. One mole of KClO3 and 122.55 grams is the molar mass. Make sure everything cancels before you leave your problem. I will be left with grams of KClO3 and I got 6.575 times 10 to the fifth grams and I'm sure I'm going to have a line of students ready to tell me if I screwed up and have my math wrong on that one. I don't do it often, but I'm sure I'll have a video that'll happen too. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate your time.